For the next uh, presentation, um, I would like to uh, invite here uh, the chief evangelist developer and uh, product manager of Sangrid, which Sangrid, who has heard of Sangrid? Can you raise? All right, a lot of people. It's basically the largest email infrastructure sending service in the world, and they're sending currently about 15 billion emails a month, which is incredible. Um, and one interesting thing about uh, their company culture is that they are organizing periodic hackathons in order to generate ideas for their product. So um, he's the guy in charge of the hackathons, and he will tell us uh, many things about how they, they uh, managed to reach this milestone. So please give it up for Mr. Martin Davis. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be back here in Bucharest. Uh, I came to How to Web last year for the first time, and I had uh, a wonderful time. And uh, I was really pleased when I spoke with Daniel and, and Bogdan this year, and they asked me to come back. I did have one proviso, though, about coming back. I said, Bogdan, I'm only going to come back and speak at your conference if I can speak in a room with a massive chandelier in it. And luckily, they've actually met that request, so I'm very pleased to be here today. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Martin Davis, and I'm the developer evangelist team lead for Europe, Middle East, and Africa for SendGrid. A lofty job title. Uh, that's my massive wide face as well up there. Uh, my wife chose that picture. You saw the official one uh, in the slide, but apparently that's not good enough, so this is the one that I have to use when I'm talking. Uh, I'm a developer, uh, serial hackathon organizer. Serial meaning that I've organized a few. We'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Uh, I do a lot of mentoring for accelerator programs, uh, advising early stage startups and technical teams within those startups, developers. Um, and I spent uh, around about two, three, three years uh, working as a product manager for companies like the BBC and Universal Music Group. Uh, I was also a certified scrum master as well. I've got a bit of paper that says that I can say the words like agile on stage and, and mean it, and really mean it. Um, those are some links there at the bottom. Uh, if you want to tweet anything good or bad, at Martin D. Uh, some GitHub stuff, it's just there to prove that I know how to write some code. Uh, and uh, other past history stuff there on LinkedIn as well. So what am I going to talk about? Well. The product, uh, the title of this talk is Hacking Your Way to Product Excellence, which was uh, really a way of just seeing if people would come to a talk like that. And you've shown up, which is great, so, or I've already won. Um, the idea behind it is uh, I want to talk about how you, using the kind of hackathon mentality, both going to and also using hackathons internally, um, can engage your team and increase developer happiness. That, will also help to generate other ideas and ways of thinking within your company that you can use to help reprioritize and push forward your product roadmap. Who's heard of hackathons? By show of hands, most people. Good. So I can do this really quickly. So they're very, they're very varied these days as well. Um, hackathons happen on a really regular basis. I get asked to go to an enormous amount of events, and SendGrid gets asked to support an enormous amount of events like this. And we have to say no uh, to quite a lot of them just because we don't have enough people to represent at all of the ones that we get asked. There are literally events that are about putting developers in a room and having them build something from nothing over a few hour to 24 hour to 48 hour period on a weekly, if not more than one week basis around the world. There is an incredible amount of events. But the basis of them is you know, simplistic in that you put people in a room and give them some tools and let them build something from nothing over a period of time. Great, very free, creative, it's, great. it's awesome. They can be for sometimes for big prizes, sometimes for not big prizes. Sometimes they're there to demonstrate specific technology so people are encouraged to just work with one thing and build something you know, for one particular company. Or there's a multitude of companies uh, that are there presenting their technologies, and they'd all like you to, to have a crack at it. But 
the very basic nature of it is that it's 24 hours, roughly, it's kind of the average for most of them, to create something from nothing and hope that that something is, is cool and then present it to people at the end. I think that hackathons are great for a lot of reasons. One of the most creative places that I've ever spent time is at hackathons. For me, they've been really good for my creativity. I find it very difficult, always really, to find time in my life and in between work to just sit down and build something and actually open up and write some code and just work towards something because I don't ever really get the dedicated time to do that. And hackathons kind of provide that for me. It's a 24 hour period where I know that that's the only thing I'm really going to be doing. You know, I can turn off the email, I can turn off everything else. You know, I've told the wife I'm going to be out for a bit. Um, you know, I don't have to walk the dog, I don't have to cook any dinner. I'm just going to be hacking for a bit. I'm just going to build something. And I can do it with friends and I can do it alone. You know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And that kind of spurs you know, my motivation. When I was working at the BBC, we did a, a hackathon um, internally, which was for no other reason than to just play around with a really stupid idea that we had one day. And that idea was, could we build something in a room that we could then take to a big music festival and measure everything from like how intense the crowd was to how hard the band rocked and stuff like that. We called it the Rock to Scale, and we, we spent a whole, uh, a whole day kind of working on that. And there wasn't, there was no company motivation behind it. This was a people motivation for doing that. And it really got people fired up to kind of break away for a minute from what they were doing day to day, to think about that kind of thing and just really, you know, just pop the brain out for a second and reset and go into a room and do something very, very different. And that leads to the other aspect as well that I think is really, really good, the experimentation side of things. It's very restriction free. So you can go in there and play with whatever you want, do whatever you like, use whatever technology. There's not going to be anyone in the room and say, that's going to say, no, you can't do that. Because you can, of course you can. From a company perspective, Sangrid included, they're awesome for product feedback. We go out there, we demonstrate our APIs, we have people using them, we help them to use them, do integrations over the course of the time. They tell us things that they don't like about the product, they tell us things that they do like about the product. We push all of that back into the product team, feed it back as regularly as possible, try to build on that, try to act on that stuff. They're great for working with like-minded people as well. You've got a whole bunch of people in the room. There's a tremendous amount of knowledge in there as well. It's effectively like a room. If there was a room full of people and that, all those people were the, the human version of Stack Overflow, that's it in a room. Overall, hackathons are great places to learn. And if you just go down with the basis that you'll come out having done something new and tried something different, it's a great approach. So what do I know about this stuff? Well, I've organized 15 hackathons personally up to this point. Um, the majority of those have been under a strand called Music Hack Day, which is a uh, music-related uh, hackathon that happens about once a month. Um, I took over the general organization of that in about 2011, and they happen all over the world, uh, from Sydney to Boston, London, Japan. Um, it's, it's a really, really cool event, and I've organized the London version of that, one that happens in the south of France. I've done hackathons for the BBC, for other, other companies, um, They've all varied in size. The biggest one I ever did was for 250 people. The smallest I've done was for 15 people. It doesn't matter really about the size. It's not necessarily the amount of people that go that makes it a good thing. At this stage, I've facilitated approximately 380 hours of hacking time for people, which is about over 1,000 people who have attended the events that I've organized personally, created 750 projects, um, I advise on at least 10 other events like this a year. I don't necessarily organize them, but I help people put those kind of events together. And personally, I've attended over 100 hackathons since 2007, so I've spent quite a lot of time in rooms doing just random stuff. So let's get to the meat of this. How can hackathons benefit your small product team? So let's figure out who that team is. So the small product team. Now, these are theoretical teams, right? But you'll find stuff in here that I think is going to relate to, to what it is that you might be doing. Small product teams, they're often born out of just hacking an idea. I've seen small product teams emerge from hackathons and then go on to form companies afterwards. 
they're generally kind of scrappy. They have the ability to react quickly to what it is that they do. You know, they can build and ship. You know, if they come up with a feature idea, they can throw it together. Hopefully, if they're doing good, nicely tested code, it'll uh, ship out no, with no problems. Um, any feedback that they get can make it into production relatively quickly as well. You know, they are very much in charge of their own destiny. Um, they don't really have to run it up the chain when they want to release new features. They don't have to ask permission to do it. They can just build it and get it out there. Everyone on the team is contributing to that product vision, hopefully. And uh, you know, they are the people that are in control of, of what it is that they're building. Now, this kind of team, they, they go to they go to and use hackathons for a number of reasons. A lot of them are the same motivations that I have. And that restriction-free time to work on ideas is probably the most important thing. And I'd say that in every office environment, in every startup, if you give people the ability to have restriction-free time to work on ideas, it's one of the things that's going to make them stick around for longer. And it's also going to be probably the generator of some of the best ideas that ever come in to that company. They go to events like this to get introduced to new technologies. They're very busy people. Small product teams have got a lot going on, particularly if they're a startup. There's a lot of different things happening. There's a lot of stuff coming at them. There's a lot of priorities that they need to juggle. Introduction to new technologies. You know, Matt, who spoke before me, just pointed out a whole bunch of stuff that you're no doubt going to take away. You know, when you go to events like hackathons, you get introduced to a whole bunch more, often by people like me standing on stage telling you about them. Again, the peer knowledge and support of the people in the room is immensely important. If you're a small product team, having other people out there that can advise you and help you with problems is invaluable. You can't necessarily bump up more people on the team because maybe you don't have the money to do so. Maybe you don't have the space for it. But you can go into a room like that, show people what it is you're working on, and everyone's going to come in with an idea, and everyone's going to push that. Yeah, you can choose which ones you do, but you get in the collective knowledge. It's essentially like me saying, I have this idea, and starting at the end here, and asking every single person what they thought about it. It's incredible feedback over a very small period of time. So how does it help their product? That kind of environment supports, I think, very much a build and test mentality. You can build, test, get it out, make changes very, very quickly. Being in a room full of people that you can share an idea with, they say that a problem shared is a problem halved. Well, if you do it in a room with 250 people, then th there's some sort of maths there that I can't do on stage right now. But it's uh, you know, a problem shared into 250 potential pieces, and everyone's got an opinion about it. They may not be right, but at least they're going to push it out, and they're going to help you think about that. Generally, the small product team office environment is very similar to what you would find at a hackathon. And, you know, finding teams that are kind of sitting, working together, bouncing ideas off each other. Each one's working on a smaller piece of the overall product for which they're responsible. The biggest thing, and this works for not just small teams, but big ones as well, and big companies too, seeing real people engaging with products, particularly if it's a developer-driven product or something that uses APIs, actually getting people in a room to build on top of it do stuff with it that you can see and, and help with over that period of time, it's tremendous. And like I said, at Sangrid, we use that feedback extremely regularly. One of the other things that I've seen a lot of people do at uh, events like this is you do just real-time bug fixes. Someone will come up to them and say, this doesn't work. And they'll go, yes, you're right. It's actually broken. And then they'll fix it in the room, push it out to production, go back to that person on the other side of the room and go, I fixed it now, which is great. That's fantastic for them. It's fantastic for their small company. It's fantastic for their startup. It's great to have had that feedback and be able to iterate it in. There's a couple of companies that I wanted to highlight that kind of have this mentality that I think they use it very much uh, to, to benefit what it is they do. The first one is a company called Makeshift. Uh, they have two products that they've got around right now. Um, Attending.io, which is kind of a uh, event RSVP platform. Uh, it's very cool. It's free to use. So if you organize events and you need to use uh, something to do it, other than Eventbrite, which can sometimes be a little bit kind of over the top in terms of the product features, it's very simplistic. It's just, a, you know, uh, I have an event. Here's where it is. I need a list. They build that in their office, like in a kind of like internal hackathon, just throwing ideas around. And they've now turned it into a product, and they're putting it out there. They built another thing as well in a similar fashion called Hire My Friend, which is a way of recommending people that you think are good to other companies. Putting out there that you have a bunch of people that are really great at certain skills, 
and doing that introduction, facilitating that introduction without necessarily the need for any kind of recruiter in the middle of it. Another company that I know very well called We Make Awesome Shh, they, uh, they're effectively, they're just a bunch of hackers, but they turned the hackathon mentality and the very quick prototyping that you get out of events like that into, into a company. They effectively built their entire company off the back of this. And you know, they, they take ideas that they come up with for fun and stuff that really motivates them as people. They're not necessarily looking at what is the end goal for this and what is the business aspect of this. They are just looking at, you know, would this be cool? Would we use it? Yeah. So they put together the prototype and just continue to iterate it. They have an app out right now for uh, skiers and snowboarders to use when they're on the slopes called Snowbuddy, which is based off the fact that they went on a company, there's five of them in the company, they went on a company skiing holiday earlier uh, last year, and they, uh, they built an app which had a couple of games and a couple of challenges and stuff in there. They really liked doing it, so they decided to productize it now. They just hacked it together over a couple of days to use on their holiday. Now it's a product. They built another thing called Awesome Wall, which a lot of companies used. They just grabbed social media stuff and pulled it all in. And uh, it can be used on big screens like this. London Fashion Week was the last people to use it. They just threw that together as well, the same deal. So the whole company is based on that. So SendGrid, we have the same thing. We have a, an, an aspect of the company called SendGrid Developer Services, where we have other products, Loader.io, Reflector.io, and a new one called CleverDB. They're all uh, built very, very quickly as minimum viable products in a very kind of hackathon mentality as well. They put them out there, and then they just look at all the feedback that they get from people, people that are using it, looking at Twitter, all the stuff that comes back, and they iterate that feedback in really, really quickly. And those, uh, those products are there to kind of support, you know, same as Sangri does, just, you know, making developers' lives more awesome. So let's move on and talk a little bit more about how you can do hackathon stuff in bigger teams, larger companies, where it is a little more difficult. So larger teams. I'm going to use SendGrid as kind of the example for this, because uh, what we have there in the company is we've got lots of groups of smaller teams that make up the whole product team. Let's include engineering and product management. Everybody works on the cores of the main product. It's longer sprints, longer backlog, long, much more prioritization. For a lot of companies that are in this kind of situation, being scrappy and kind of like bouncing stuff around on the backlog and prioritization is a lot more difficult. It's harder to get something back, feedback, and a piece of information that maybe means you should reprioritize something and then bump it back up uh, to the top of the list. You can't necessarily do that as often or at all. Hopefully, everyone's still contributing to the product vision, um, and everyone's focus on output is key. But focus is always very much on output in larger companies, because at that stage, output is earning you more money, hopefully. So how the hackathons help them? Now, we're going to talk about external in this concept, so actually going to hackathons. Now, they are, as we've discussed, great for product feedback, great for developer happiness, great for learning about new tech, great for collaboration with coworkers on non-work projects, testing stuff in the wild. That's great. It doesn't necessarily help your product very much. Um, reasons why it's, it's hard to filter and prioritize the feedback that you get. You know, managers think that time away from actually core products is, you know, bad time spent. Sometimes, not all of them, but, you know, it is common in some companies. People often go to hackathons to get away from their day job. So it's not necessarily great when you're in there and go, let's hack on the thing that we all work on all the time. It's fine testing some things out in the wild and putting it out there in a room full of people and getting feedback on that, but you can't necessarily reprioritize some of the things that you hear very, very quickly, so it's difficult to get that stuff back and actually see it cycled in to the product itself. So what can you do to fix that? Let's agree that this stuff is great if you run a company, no matter whether it's big or small. I think hopefully you agree that being able to do these kind of things, restriction, free time to work on ideas, introduction to new tech, peer knowledge and support, chance to move fast, break stuff, direct product feedback and input from other developers is a good thing. And having that inside your company and having that for your teams would be great. With that in mind, let's enter the magical world of the internal hackathon. Now, this is something that we did at Sengrid relatively recently, and only for the first time. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of that in a minute and how we measured some of the value for it. 
Internal hackathon, very much the same concept as an actual hackathon. I've changed the definition slightly here. Um, 24 hours to create something that might be related to pushing your core product forward. It doesn't necessarily have to be, and we'll go through a couple of reasons why that is in a minute. So let's have a look at what we did when we did this at Sainbridge. So we did it in May, the first time that we've ever done this. Now, we have a developer relations team, people like me, that stand up on stage, talk about our technology and our product in front of developers very regularly. But we haven't actually done that in front of our own company very often. So this was a really good opportunity for us as a team to do that, show them what it is that we do. So we organized this event. It was in our Boulder office. We have offices in Boulder and Denver, Colorado, one in Orange County, California. We have a little office in London. There's one in New York, one uh, in Sao Paulo. Uh, we also have a uh, support and engineering uh, office uh, in Yasht in East Romania as well. Um, we got 65 people to come from the four locations. And at this stage, we were about 200 people at the company. So 65 people is a pretty decent amount to get all the way to Boulder to participate in this. We had people from across the company. And this was really key. And this is the very important point that I want you to take away from this, is that everyone from the company was asked to be a part of this if they wanted to. And we did get people from across the company. It wasn't just product. It wasn't just engineering. We had people from operations. We had people from HR. We had technical account management, people from sales. Everybody was there to kind of come in. And for a number of reasons, it was either because they'd never been to a hackathon before and they were interested in the concept, how does that actually come together, or they just wanted to participate and they thought, you know what, this is a great situation to be in to actually push something back into what it is that we do as a company and what we do as a product. We got 20 finished projects over the 24-hour period, which is really great. Uh, 65 people to get 20 things come back, that's awesome. Six of those projects are now in our service. We rolled six of them in since May into the actual core product that is SameGrid today. So out of that time, we came with six new features that are rolled in. That's really cool, too. We brought in some guests as well, complementary technologies, Twilio, who are very much like SameGrid, but they send SMS and MMS messages, and DigitalOcean, who are a hosting company but have uh, great APIs and very good focus on developer experience and documentation. So we brought them in as well, so that people in the company could interact with them and see a little bit more about that kind of general hackathon experience. Some of the feedback that we got, we did a survey afterwards, because it's always good to know how this stuff goes down. This is one of the things that came back. So to be completely honest, I was a bit skeptical of the value of the internal hackathon, but walked away completely impressed. Somebody else? The best part of the event was the drastic amount of learning in a short amount of time. Somebody else said the learning and interaction was the best part. Seeing the different hacks, I was so proud to be working with these smart, invested, and creative people. The event just proved that there were some really awesome folks at the company and that maybe they'd never met before, maybe they'd never had an interaction with before. In terms of upping the motivation and everyone's kind of feeling around what it is that we do, the product and the people. It was awesome for that. There's some of the stuff that got built, some thematics that came out of this. You know, we, people worked on stuff that helped us identify potential customers, monitor the amount of beer left in the office. Some people built new SDKs for SendGrid, uh, new website features, uh, ways to make meetings better. So not just product stuff, but actual internal like business systems, stuff that makes the office better, stuff that makes working at the company better. Like, is the dishwasher on? It was an actual hack that came out of that. People built games, stuff to learn colleagues' names, new tools for our customers and new API features. Over the 20, these were just some of the things that came out of it. As you can see, though, there are a few things in there that are very much product related. And it's those things that have already been rolled in. Because they were good, and they were hot, and we felt like, we needed to keep that momentum going. As soon as they were there, we were like, right, it's time to reprioritize some stuff and get some of this out the door. One of those things was two-factor authentication, which is now in there. So any current SendGrid users in the room, the text messaging that you have to do now to unlock the extra bit of the account, that came out of this. Part of the survey, we asked, what do you feel you achieved at the event? And the response was really great. To see the numbers this high is, is fantastic. 95% of people said that they learned something. 87 and a half built something. 92% of people had fun. 8% of people kind of also had fun, but were a bit kind of hmm about it. They were all right. 
I interact with coworkers that I don't normally, which is great. Really high in all of those. It's fantastic. But the best one, the one that makes me really, really happy, and I think that kind of proves that you know, even if anyone's skeptical about doing this or doesn't necessarily want to go all in and do something over a 24-hour period, just putting people in the room and letting them experience this kind of stuff worked really, really well. Because when we asked them if we should do it again, 100% of people said yes, which is awesome. So we will do it again. I want to look at this other company as well, because I don't just want to make it all about us. Kaplan Systems, based in London, a financial trading company. They build trading systems, real-time trading systems. They use a lot of numbers, very high-frequency numbers coming at you all the time. It's very, very big financial tech stuff. They've been doing internal hackathons since 2010. And they do them thematically. They do different themes across those kind of things. Again, engineering operations, product. Anyone in the company is invited to be a part of these. They got 19 projects come out of the last one they did. It was in October. They've moved four projects over the time into the backlog. And those have been integrated into the product as well. So they're seeing return on what it is they're doing. And again, similar to ours, plenty of bizarre and fun things also came out of it as well. These are some of the themes that they decided to go with. Back in 2010, HTML5, because 2010, HTML5 was still kind of like, ooh, what is that? It's mystical. 2011, mobile. You, know, you see the thematic thing over the years as well and how it grows. 2012, developer productivity, workflows and data. And they've done two internal hackathons this year. 2000, early 2014, now I don't exactly know what they got out of this, but I'd love to know what came out of the hoverboards and flying cars hackathon from a financial trading company that builds real-time stuff. What did they do? I wish there was photos. They won't tell me. I asked them. So. And then the last one they just did was Level Up, which was uh, about actually hacking their own company culture and building things to make stuff just better, generally, at Kaplan. I asked the guy that ran the last one. His name's Phil. Uh, and this is what he said about it. Says, Kaplan have lots of software components in their locker. Hackathons result in a surprising combination of those components that deliver real innovation. Demonstrate the power of the tools that the company has. The latter has the benefit of increasing the knowledge of the entire company by exposing the tools and use cases. It's great. They're really getting stuff out of it, and it's helping the company to realize what it is that they do and what the importance of what they do is and actually what's happening within there, because sometimes that stuff gets lost. This is the best one. The biggest benefit, in my opinion, for Kaplan is that it helps everyone realize just how powerful the software really is, which can be a real boost to morale. And I think that is really key. When you work on large product teams, you work on big products, you may be working on just a tiny little piece of something that is part of the whole. And sometimes it's difficult to kind of see the bigger picture. You don't necessarily grasp on to exactly you know, what it is that you're doing and the impact that it can have on the customers that you're there supporting. When you take a step back from that and you're actually building necessarily on top of your product itself, working on something that's slightly different from where you normally are, you get to reset that vision. And I think that that ends up in some really, really core differences for the way that people approach things after that point. So nearly our time. We're going to say, if you think about doing this kind of thing, even if it's something that is kind of niggling in your mind and you think, maybe we'll give it a go at some point, just do it. You don't have to dig in really big. You don't have to go big and fancy. Just break some people out of the, of the team that they're in, mix them up, throw them in with people from different disciplines from all around the company. Just give them some time to be free with the thinking. Put in stuff that's going to inspire them creatively. You know, here's some ways that you can you know, make sure that you actually see a little bit of value out of it. You know, highlight common pain points. What's gone wrong with the stuff you tried to build in the past? Why didn't it get to production? You know, what happened with stuff that you've tried in the past? Note and highlight complementary technologies, external technologies, throw things in the room. When we did ours, we, we just bought a, a MakerBot 3D printer as well, just because it was in the room and people could do stuff with it. You know, not necessarily going to feed back very much into what we do at SendGrid, but it's good to have it there, and it's going to last for a long time, and people build stuff with it in the office, you know, little tools and things like that, which is great. You know, it's, again, it's pulling them out and doing something slightly differently. Demo previously discarded ideas. There's always stuff that never makes it onto the backlog. And there may be reasons why. It might not be good. 
But there might be some stuff that maybe, you know, you can bring it back, you know. Maybe someone actually working a little bit on that kind of idea will put a little bit of technology behind it that proves that actually it's something that should go back on the backlog. Encourage the use of competitors, always a good opportunity to like, take a look at what competitors are doing in a situation like this. Again, when you're sort of stepping out of the day-to-day -day mentality. Great opportunity to scratch itches. If you've thought, you know, this idea that I've had is really, really good, but I just don't have that time. I can't work on it. You could take this time to work on it, and you could build up the, the idea enough to prove that it is a good idea and that it should be actually part of the product itself. The biggest thing, I think, though, is that you've got to commit to rolling some of the really good stuff that comes out of these events back into the product. Otherwise, you know, you're doing them, and they're going to be great, and it's going to pull people out of you know, their day-to-day, -day and they're going to you know, love the fact that they get this creative experience. But Someone's got to be responsible for taking the really cool ideas while they're still hot and pushing them back in to the company itself. If you're going to do it, this is a really, really good website to check out, Hacker Pledge. Just gives you an idea. You can use this as a way of running an entire company if you want to, but it's basically a pledge from you to say to the people that work on your product, you know, we're going to give you time to be free with your thinking. We're going to give you time to work on different projects that aren't necessarily related to this, to keep you motivated, to keep you know, everything about what it is that you like about working here up to the actual level. I'm going to leave you with this. Hacker Pledge is great. Internal hackathons are a lot of fun. Hackathons in general are fantastic for motivation and creativity as developers and product managers. But no matter whether you do this event at any point, there should always be Lego. OK? Every office should always have Lego, and every event that you do should always have Lego, because it gets people doing stuff with their hands and not staring at screens. OK? And it's Lego, not Legos. OK? Remember that. Um, I think that's it for me. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. OK, let's take a few questions now. First in the back, over there. Hi. Hey. Um, I have a question. So uh, you are mentioning in, I think, one or two of your examples about organized hackathons. Uh, you're mentioning that the, the people that were participating were you know, engineers, well, developers, but also salespeople and HR. Uh, could you, I mean, I, I know what, what happens in the hackathons with engineers, but I, I don't really understand what you know, salespeople do right now. So could you give me an example? Yeah, so what do salespeople do at a hackathon? Yeah. Well, internally, um, you know, we asked everybody in the company to come down because we wanted to make it an all-company experience, um, you know, which meant that anyone from the company could come. And you know, they came because they were interested, but you know, they might not necessarily have the technical skills, but they can work on the development of ideas with people. They can bring use cases. You know, particularly for an internal stuff, like the sales team talk to a lot of people all the time. And they're also talking to people that are telling them reasons why they don't want to use us. So they can actually put in a lot of use cases up front that then you know, can inspire what it is that people go on and work for, um, actually work on. Some of them wanted to come down because they wanted to actually sit down and actually you know, dig into a bit of code and actually try something for the first time, which was awesome. Yeah, and that happened across the board. So everybody has something to contribute to the event, which is why we ended up with such uh, you know, a bevy of really good ideas. It's because you know, everyone was bringing something unique to it. They didn't necessarily have to just be there writing code. They can bring something no matter what. Come on, guys. So basically, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, so basically, they are. They are also involved in, you know, rolling out features, right? They are not doing something else, whatever, finding new customers or something like this. They are focused on trying to roll out, well, code in the end, helping developers with ideas and so on, and customer insights to roll out code, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in the in the basis of this yeah. actual internal hackathon that we did, yeah, they were. You know, they, everybody formed teams, and they were part of those teams that you know built and presented ideas at the end. So, yeah. Absolutely. Just there, yeah. One more. Hi. Uh, I'm fairly new to the concept of the hackathons. 
I guess, especially compared to you. And uh, I just wanted to ask, it, it seems like really cool, and why wouldn't we want to work only like this? So why go back to normal? Do you, have you seen anything like doing too much of hackathons or just approaching, it, it seems the perfect solution for approaching any big creative issue that you have or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of what I said today is, is, is within the company realm relatively subjective because it's, you know, it is more difficult than me standing up here and going, yeah, you should do it and here's why, all right? You find the time and, you know, the resources and stuff like that, you know, it's, I'd say that if a company was trying to do this on a more regular basis, it would be awesome. If they made it part of the company culture to do it, that would be great, but it is difficult to, to do that and so that's why I always suggest that it's good to kind of roll in like smaller pieces of it not necessarily go, right, we have to do 24 hours of building stuff now and just every month we've got to do it. Like, that's not the way to approach it, right? I mean, we did our first one back in May. We haven't done one since. We will do another one, but we don't know when that's going to be yet. Uh, there are aspects of it, you know, taking time out, you know, maybe if it's just an hour a week, you know, just to go and work on an idea that's nothing related to what it is you're doing. Stuff like that, you can roll it in. I've got a blog post actually coming out uh, tomorrow on the SendGrid blog that expands a little bit more on that, kind of the key features that you can do if you don't necessarily want to do uh, like a full-on Intel hackathon and block out the time for it, like stuff that you can feed into the company culture, stuff that you can feed into the product team to just have people experiencing a little bit of that that can kind of help with the motivation and creativity. But yeah, I mean, it takes time. It does. You've really got to commit to it or build in little bits and slowly get up to that point because for some people it's really hard to do and I understand that because I've worked at companies where the idea of doing this would just be complete no. Like, finding the time to do it at the BBC was hard enough. But when I worked for Universal Music Group, I wanted to do one then. And that was, nah. <laughs> uh, and the follow-up question, or maybe a clarification. Did you experience any plateaus if people started doing it too often? Or is there a, I don't do too much of it? Have you seen that side? Uh, I mean, not, not, from, uh, not from a Sengri perspective. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say that from a smaller product team, there is, um, there's a lot of companies that, you know, because they're working on uh, API-driven products and that kind of stuff, like actually going to hackathons is like a massive part of their marketing strategy because that's their audience and that's who they want to be talking to. Um, I'd say that one of the things that is a downside to doing that is that they go and they, they sponsor the event maybe and they present a technology and have people build on it, but then they don't follow up enough with the people that are there uh, that actually use their tech and they don't highlight enough of that stuff. So really, they're just pushing the money out and putting a brand on something, but they're not pulling any return back into their company or their product as much as they seem to think they are. Sometimes it works brilliantly, though, in that sense. Other times it doesn't. You know, like I say, it's, it's, it, it's every case of this is really, really unique and everybody has a different story about it. But, you know, for us as a company, it works brilliantly. Others, it'll work great, but it really depends on how they use what they get back from it. Okay, thanks. Thanks, man. Guys, we can uh, take one more question if you want to ask something more. Anybody? No? Okay, I, I, I guess this is all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you very much. It was amazing.